Hey everyone. Sorry about earlier. My uh my uh memory had run out so I had to kind of upload my videos and delete some videos so I could make some more space. And then after I started reading the second part again, the battery had died. <laughs> so here I am again reading this second part to you. Now, let's get started. <laughs> Again, I'm going to start with the last paragraph of which we left off in the last video, and then I'm going to continue on from there. The unit of a nation is the individual. The government represents only the average intelligence of the u unites compromising the nation. Therefore, our work is with the unit. When the thought of the individual changes, the collective thought will take care of itself. But we try to reverse the process. We try to change governments instead of individuals. But with a little intelligent organized effort, the present destructive thought could be readily charged into a constructive thought, in which case the situation would change rapidly. Ten years ago, the securities of German corporations sold side by side with those of England and America. No one dreamed that they were not absolutely safe. The municipal bonds of the large German cities sold freely on a 4% basis in London, Paris, and New York. The mark was as stable as a dollar pound sterling. The interest is still being paid upon these securities, and the principal will be paid at maturity. But in money that is hardly worth the paper it is printed upon, and so the, conser the conservative German investor, the man who made only safe investments, who was careful to buy only first mortgage bonds that yielded not more than 4 to 5 percent is practically penniless. But as a compensation, he can reflect that a liberal government allowed the people to have plenty of beer. And when men have plenty of beer, they will usually be glad to let someone else do the thinking for them. For the use of beer is not calculated to produce deep, clear, sustained, or logical thought. And we've all drank beer before. We all know how it makes us feel. You know, it, it disrupts our energy currents. I've had my experiences. You know, I had to learn s some way or another. I had to learn why it was making me feel the way it was making me feel. You know what? I figured it out. I figured it out because they are disrupting your energy centers. You are you have seven energy centers there, your chakra systems. You know, if they can find a way to, how do you say? disturb the upper three in your mental, in your mind space, then you wouldn't really be able to think as clearly as the mind is capable of thinking. And so we find that during the past week in November 1992, or 1922, there were issued 61,644,000,000 of these marks, which was exceeded by only by the number issued during the preceding week, which was 67,579,000,000. The value of a German mark is now something like one hundredth part of one cent. Thousands and tens of thousands of American citizens are slowly and painfully creating a fund which they hope will protect them in the days to come. It is important that they, too, is it important that they, too, will be paid in valueless dollars ten years from now? The reason that the dollar will probably remain at par is because we do not desire the kind of personal liberty that enriches a few at the expense of the many. The kind of liberty that attempts to reduce American citizens to automatons in order that a few may dictate the destiny of a nation. That is exactly what they are doing. Happiness, prosperity, and contentment are the result of clear thinking and right action. For the thought proceeds and predetermines the nature of the action, the thought. If they find a way to keep you from thinking, you won't be able to create like you were supposed to. A little artificial stimulation in the form of intoxicating liquor may temporarily still the senses and thus serve to confuse the issue. But as in economics and mechanics, every action is followed by a reaction. So in human relations, every action is followed by an equal reaction. And so we have, to, we have come to know that the value of things depend on the recognition of the value of persons. 
Whenever a creed becomes current that things are of more importance than people, programs become fixed, which set the interests of wealth above the interests of people. This action must necessarily be followed by a reaction. We of America must remember that the large business of life is not economically conducted unless we succeed in transforming our resources into the highest grade of physical, mental, and moral persons evolvable. Then and then only shall we know that our investments are safe. The question is how may this be accomplished? What combinations of thought shall be made in order to bring about the chemicalization which will result in the greatest good for the greatest number? Shall we encourage a spirit of anarchy and discontent and follow the example of Italy by turning over the machinery of government to those who are interested only in the exaltation of personality? For in Italy there is today no authority but that of Mussolini. The chamber has none. The senate has none. The king has none. His power is absolute. He may abrogate all laws appertaining to finance and apply new laws to his own making. Already he has indicated that he will levy a tax upon workmen drawing high wages, not so much for fiscal reasons or for political and moral reasons. This is the result of fostering a spirit of discontent, disorder, and social unrest, and nowhere do these conditions obtain except in countries where it has been easily to mislead the people through the distribution of alcoholic beverages which destroy the power to think. the distribution of alcoholic beverages which destroy the power to think. A celebrated European statesman visions the present stated as follows, the present situation as follows. Unfortunately, the ills of war like of that of 1914 through 1918 are repaired, but with difficulty. Given even the entire good faith of the conquered, if the latter by con... con... con Conscious, conscious, hold on, conscientious, conscientious, <laughs> C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-T-I-U-S, conscious, conscientious, <laughs> you guys get the point, labor, genuinely desire to help the world out of its sang- sanguinary nightmare of its sanguinary nightmare and back to normal life, that world would nonetheless remain for a long time hopelessly adrift and at sea. Hold on, you guys. I kind of got to... I got to check the definition of that. I've never heard that word. Con... Conscientious. Conscientious. Governed by conscience, controlled by or done according to one's inner sense of what is right. Cool. Okay, that's conscientious. Then the next one was sanguinary. 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 Full of or characterized by bloodshed. Ready or eager to shed blood. Wow. (laughs) That's kind of (laughs) creepy. Anyways, let's, let's continue reading now that we got those definitions out of the way. If the latter by conscientious labor genuinely desire to help the world out of its sanguinary nightmare and back to normal life, that world would nonetheless remain for a long time hopelessly adrift and at sea. We are assisting today at the prolongation of a war which is not even likely to approach a conclusion unless there is few unless there is new orientation of a peacetime energy. Finances upside down, budgets artificially met, Rates of exchange giving 65 francs to the pound and 14 to the dollar, and terribly distorted fiduciary circulation and ever-increasing cost of living, strikes rapid changes in the stock markets, making commerce and industry impossible, 
accumulation of stocks, such as the ransom of these four years of war. It was materially impossible that either for conqueror or conquered aught else should result from this world catastrophe than complete chaos for all. Millions of men are not consecrated for 52 months to a work of death and destruction for the world to be reestablished in the morrow of peace. Such rap rapidity reacquired equilibrium is beyond the bounds of human practicability. Now remember, all that was said by European statesmen. It will be remembered that the master metaphysician said the same thing in somewhat different language many years ago, and he's talking about Jesus. Then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world, nor never shall be afterwards. And if that period would be not shortened, no flesh at all would be saved. But for the elect's sake, that period will be shortened. Matthew 24, verse 21, 22. The stomach that is, the stomach is the great organ of accelerated circulation to the blood, of elasticity to the animal spirits, of pleasurable or painful vibration to the nerves, of vigor to the mind, and of fullness to the cheerful affections of the soul. Here is the silver cord of life, and the golden bowl at the fountain, and the will at the cistern. And as these fulfill their duty, the muscular and mental and moral powers act in unison and fill the system of vigor and delight. But as these central energies are enfeebled, the strength of mind and body declines, and lassitude and depression and melancholy and sighing succeed to the high beating of health and the light of life becomes as darkness. Experience has decided that any stimulus applies statedly to the stomach which raises its muscular tone above the point at which it can be sustained by food and sleep, produces, when it has passed away, debility, a relaxation of the overworked organ proportioned in its pre preternatural excitement. The life-giving power of the stomach fills, falls, of course, as much below the tone of cheerfulness and health as it was injudici injudiciously raised above it. If the experiment was be repeated often, it produces an artificial tone of stomach essential to cheerfulness and muscular vigor, entirely above the power of the regular sustenance of nature to sustain, and creates a vacuum which nothing can fill but the destructive power which made it. And when protracted use has made the difference between difference great between the natural and this artificial tone, and habit has made it a second nature. The man is a drunkard, and in 99 instances, a hundred is irretrievably undone. Irretrievably undone. Irretrievably undone. Irretrievably. Beer has been recommended as a substitute and a means of leading back the captive to health and liberty. But thought, but though it may not create temperate habits as soon, it has no power to allay them. It will even finish what alcohol has begun, and with this difference only, that it will not gra that it will not rasp the vital organs with quite so keen a file, and enables the victim to come down to his grave by a course somewhat more dilatory, and with more good natured stupidity of the idiot and less of the dem demoniac frenzy of the madman demoniac frenzy of the madman. Wine has been prescribed as a means of decaying the intemperate from the ways of death, but habit cannot be thus cheated out of this dominion, nor ravening appetite be a muse, muse down to the sober intemperate demand. It is not true that wine will restore the intemperate, or stay the progress of the disease. Enough must be taken to screw up nature to the tone of cheerfulness, or she will cry, Give! with an importunity not to be resisted, importunity not to be resisted, and long before the work of death is done, wine will fail to minister the stimulus of sufficient activity to rouse the flagging spirits, or will become acid on the enfeeble stomach, and whiskey and brandy will be called into hasten to its consummation, the dilatory work of self-destruction. 
so that if no man becomes a sot upon wine, it is only because his hands, because it hands him over to more fierce and terrible executions of heaven's delayed vengeance. To the action of a powerful mind, a vigorous muscular frame is, as a general rule, indispensable. Like heavy ordnance, the mind, in its efforts, recoils on the body, and will soon, and will soon shake down a puny frame. The history of the world confirms this conclusion. Egypt, once at the head of nations, has, under the weight of her own effeminacy, effeminacy gone down to the dust. The victories of Greece laid it upon her the luxuries of the East, and covered her glory with the night of ages. And Rome, with iron foot trod down the nations and shook the earth, witnessed in her latter days faintness of heart and the shield of the mighty vilely cast away. The mighty vilely. Vilely. Vilely? Last scene of chapter 9. See in the second part. Before we end this, I need to find out what vilely means. Or vilely. Wretchedly bad, highly offensive, unpleasant, or objectionate. Okay. The heart and the shield, the mighty violently cast away. That's the end of chapter 90, guys, of mental chemistry. If you made it to this far with me, I want to thank you. Because, like I've been saying... We're going to change the world, and it's going to start by changing ourselves. And you guys are going to see. You're going to see what's possible for you. There is no one to change but yourself.